What is up guys? It's me, Matthew F. McMahon here, here to talk to you today. It's a remake of the Timu video. Yep, I'm going to be showing you some stuff I got from Timu. Some of it's from the old Timu video, some of it's a new Timu video. And indeed, I am going to be showing you all sorts of stuff. This is going to be in no particular order, so keep that in mind. Probably going to be recording these in multiple sessions, so you're going to see a lot of jump cuts, as always. Without further ado, let's get started with some pinaronis. Some pinaronis. Let me pause and get them all set up for you. See you in a little bit. Okay, so I'm back. Let's start off with some Pokemon pins. These are badges from Gen 5, I believe. Half of them are from an anime or some sort of made-up bullshit. Half of them are real. So first, let's start off with the first badge in the collection, right? here it's purple looks like a little pin that you like stick on a map it's kind of cool i think it's from the anime there's this one right here which is red and, and blue or is it red and purple i don't know or is it red and black i don't know but either way kind of looks like an eye like a little eye with a crown and a little lightning bolt at the bottom next up is one that i've definitely seen in the anime because i saw a picture of it it's uh this one right here it looks like a shooting star there's this one right here which i think is real i think it actually is from the game i don't know i could be wrong there there's there's this one right here, which is definitely a real one. It's a fire badge. And this one right here, let me look at it. It's it's a water badge, like that. Next up is, I believe, a, uh, not fairy, because fairy didn't, doesn't exist in Gen 5. It's probably a wing badge, like a flying badge, if you will. Finally, we have uh, one that's definitely probably not a real badge, but it's probably something you stick on a map, like I said before. A Pokeball badge. Look at that, with a little point on the end right there. I'm glad I picked Gen 5, because I was originally going to go with Gen 1, but Gen 5 doesn't get enough love. I mean, I, I guess it does from the hardcores, but didn't sell as well. I mean, honestly, I think it's where the series peaked. They're not exactly enamel. I'm pretty sure they're, they're like gold with painted on stuff. I mean, it's a little bit disappointing. I think I got a refund on it because you know I was, I was trying to get other stuff for cheap I, I do kind of abuse that system on Timu if, if I don't know if you'll you'll figure that out as we go along next up is another item I refunded it's it's a grape soda badge from freaking up and this one indeed was something that I refunded because if I don't know if you can see this right here but it's a little sticker it's not even something engraved on there which is what I thought it would be very disappointing it's just a bottle cap with a pin as well as a sticker, and that's not exactly uh, cool with me, but, you know. Next up is another pin, just a random ass pin. It's a Junji Ito pin. It's one based off something, as you can see, I'm wearing a Junji Ito shirt right now. I'm assuming, I don't know what it's based off of. Uh, I've only read, like, half of um, Uzumaki, so call me a fake fan if you want. But I, I like Uzumaki, I'm probably going to finish it later on in the year. Maybe Halloween, I don't know. It just depends on how I feel. Uh, next up is uh, another one that I refunded, funny that. Brewster coffee from Animal Crossing various Animal Crossings um yeah it doesn't look like it did in the picture that's why I refunded it but it's actually not a half bad pin um you'll, you'll notice with a lot of these that they have gold backings because a lot of them actually came with rubber backings and I replaced them with a little thing that I bought ages ago on eBay speaking of uh, pins with gold backings here is a little dog from uh, I'm assuming Night Nightmare Before Christmas yes the dog from Nightmare Before Christmas I haven't seen the movie very much so I'm in another case of being a fake fan you know I do like the design the main reason why I bought it was because it came in a set with this little thing a boo from Mario look at that that's all spooky and whatnot and the cool part is this has a black backing uh, a metal backing on the end I don't know if you can't really see it let's go with another one this one is the dinosaur from Google Chrome when you lack internet and as somebody who doesn't have a uh, fiber optic who has cable internet I still experienced that little dinosaur a little bit too much than what I wanted to but uh, it is definitely better than it used to be. Paint job on that pin isn't exactly the best, but it's it's decent enough. It, it fits the job, or it fits the description, I would say. Next up is a jellyfish from Spongebob. This one is very, actually high quality. I think it actually turned out fantastic, given what uh, what it is. So let's go with another set real quick. Let's go with the Naruto set. Yes, I am into Naruto. I have seen a decent chunk of uh, the original and seen bits and pieces of Shippuden, but I'm more interested in the lore and the the character and the, and the power levels and whatnot uh, the characters i should say i think in general it's a pretty rad 
bad anime. Boruto's kind of shit though, let's be real. Anyway, first up is Gara's Little Gourd. Next up is the Konoha Leaf Village symbol. I'm pretty sure it has a name, I don't remember what exactly it's called. Uh, here is the regular ass Sharingan. Not the Mangekyo, not the Eternal Mangekyo, whatever bullshit they've introduced since. Yeah, it's just a regular ass Sharingan. Next up is, a, is it a dart? Is it a shuriken? Who knows, but it's one of those things. It's either a dart or a shuriken, depending on what you call it. Because I'm pretty sure a shuriken is something different, but I always associate with the shuriken. Finally, it's the Akatsuki symbol, which I believe the symbol actually is used in Japanese mythology, or is it Chinese mythology? Either one. I know it's definitely used outside of the Akatsuki, but it's most well known as the Akatsuki symbol. The next two are the final ones. First up is the Resident Evil Umbrella Corporation logo. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is a lot of these pins, the way I, the way I look at them is I make sure to, to look at pictures on the website but, and compare them to the pictures in the reviews. This one didn't have a picture in the review. I took a gamble on it, but it did pay off because I knew that it was really hard to mess up. But in general, I would recommend not buying anything that either A, does not have any reviews, or B, does have reviews but without pictures. And make sure it has plenty of reviews, make sure plenty of people have bought it. Make sure you know what the hell you're getting into before you buy it. In general, I would say do not take risks on stuff that is not worth spending the money on. Like if it's really cheap, go ahead and take the risk. But if it's something really expensive, obviously you need, you need to do your research. Your mileage may vary. Sorry, I forgot to mention I have one extra pin. I uh... I forgot where it was and I found it. So the first of two last pins, for realsies this time, one is the Mario Mushroom right here. Looky here, it's a Mario Mushroom. I got it for free with a certain item that I will not spoil, uh, but you'll you'll notice uh, it's quite the st -st -st steal. And next up is another free pin that I got with another order. It's a little paper airplane. So overall, those are all the pins, and this is this section done and over with. But boom skis. What's up, guys? I'm back for the practical section. Now, you may be asking, what is the practical section? Well, let me show you one of the things that I bought, and maybe you'll get a better idea if you look right here. See this? Let me see if it'll actually uh, show you. But it's a rubber ring for my keyboard. Speaking of that, one of the things I should have said from the get-go is that I actually have made other team orders that have not arrived. One of them being, speaking of keyboards, it's Milky Yellow Pro Switches from Gatoron. I ordered 105 for, get this, with, uh, with a combination of a refund, which you'll see which refund that was, as well as two $5 credits adding up to, t to $18. Because of those uh, five dollar credits and because of that eight dollar uh, credit refund, I was able to get uh, those uh, milky yellow switches for four oh eight. Pretty damn impressive. And uh, since then, it's even gotten a little bit lower to four oh four, which is pretty even better. I've gotten also a pin board for all the pins that I've shown you, as well as a new amiibo for a game which I will not spoil. Little bootleg amiibos, new ones to replace my old ones, which I think I might have might have spoiled if you've seen some of my other videos. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a little uh, tangent aside. Let's move on back to the practical section. This is uh, something else to do with keyboards right here. It's a freaking uh, little tong thing that you go like. Doot, doot. On our keyboard switches, it's not exactly the most practical because it is a little bit bent out of shape. Because when I've tried to take out switches in the past, they kind of bend out every which way except for the way they're supposed to. Another thing that I bought uh, that is practical, but probably not going to use it in the near future because let me just sidetrack a little bit again. Uh, one of my Joy Cons is actually uh, uh, been replaced because when I was messing around with my with my uh, switch, it accidentally uh, accidentally threw it a little bit, bumped it to, to the corner of a door. And uh, the Joy-Cons just stopped working, like the uh, trigger stopped working and everything. Started just, you know, going, give, doing random input, so I tried opening it up and repairing it. Uh, I used one of these, these one of these little uh, plastic uh, tongs. Or plastic, uh, pl uh, what are they called? Uh, not pliers, they're called... Uh, Tweezers, one of these plastic tweezers to try to take it apart and undo the uh, ribbons and the and the trigger ribbon. I accidentally broke into two, so I decided to say, I decided to say fuck it, threw threw the old uh, Joy Cons away and just bought a new one. And so now my Animal Crossing Switch does not match, but I don't really give a shit. So there's it's no big deal. That segues into the fact that I bought plastic tweezers. Here's one of them right here. I already showed you another one, which was this one, and then here is yet another one right here. There's this one right here, which is more of like a sharper sort of uh, little center one. It looks like this on the side, if you will. There's this one right here, which is like this. 
is like uh, this. And, you know, I probably shouldn't use the sharp one. I probably should use a duller one. In general, I should have been way softer with it because I thought because it was plastic, I could go a little bit harder, but obviously I couldn't know. I learned my lesson there. Let's move on quickly to the fidget toy section. Yes, indeed, I have bought several fidget toys. So this is going to be a bit of a repeat section because uh, the, a lot of the fidget toys I bought were earlier on when I uh, when I already made the other team a video. First up is with definitely a repeat. It's these little magnet magnetic ring thingamajigs. They spin like calm saw. Like this. See, look at that. See that? They spin like that. And they are magnetic little rings that you kind of can spin around and mess with. Now, I'm, I've been informed that kids definitely cannot use them because their fingers are not the proper size, but for adults, they're perfectly fine to eat to spin around your fingers. Overall, they're pretty nice, Emmett. Like I, like I said in the last video, uh, chewed them up a little bit, my little dog Emmett. And uh, yeah, he um, he messes them a little bit, but thankfully I was able to recover them before I messed with them too bad. Next up is the one that's more recent. It's a fidget spinner that spins like this. It has little tops on the top and bottom. You can spin it like that, or you can spin it like this. You can spin it like this, see? Uh, one that I refunded and that helped with the refund that ended up getting me those cheap switches is this little uh, chain thing. It came in a little plastic or uh, aluminum tin that was not iron like it said. Claimed it was a metal uh, chain. I'm pretty sure it is metal, but it's really cheap metal. I mean, it's it's just not of the quality I was expecting, but it is fun to fidget around with. And it did come with a screwdriver as well. Next up in the fidget toy section is one that is a clicker like this. It clicks like this. I think I, did I show this one in the previous video? Probably not. I think I showed one of its uh, twins. But this one has a lot of magnets that are coming up. It's kind of unfortunate. It's not exactly the most uh, highly built, but it still works no problem. And as you can see, it's kind of like a fakey fake brass material, because if it was real brass, it'd be a lot more expensive. This brass is super expensive to produce. I'm assuming it's just uh, like tinted or whatever. Next up is another one right here. It's a little, uh, Skull little thing the jig that goes like this, like a like a zippo. This one's one of my favorites. It really is. I really enjoy it quite a bit. I use it a lot. Speaking of one I use a lot, let's go with the Oreo. The Oreo little thing the jig right here that, that turns like this. Yes, indeed. This one I also use quite a bit. I'm kind of blowing through these because I got a lot to show you. So next up is one that's like a wheel. It's a fidget spinner that spins like a wheel. And uh, these things in, in the center, they can detach, like uh, calm sa. And uh, they're something where they're fun to kind of fidget around with, although when you spin it, you do end up undoing a lot of these and you end up having to re-attach uh, them or re-tighten them. That's part of the fidgeting fun. I'm pretty happy with those. One that's new that I have not shown before is uh, these little uh, freaking keyboard switch uh, fidget toy thingamajigs. One has a little uh, MX Red clone and one has an MX Blue clone. Uh, Cherry MX Red and Cherry MX Blue. Yeah, they're, they're not exactly the real thing. They're probably just their generic version, but it, it uh, fidgets pretty nicely. I mean, I don't know what to say about these fidget toys. I'm just blowing right through them because I just want to get through this as quick as possible. Next up is another fidget toy, one that I don't use as often. It's one where you spin these little uh, circles in the middle and you just do various things with all these layers. And it, it, I wish it wasn't in this uh, particular color. It kind of reminds me of a baby toy. I wish I would've gotten in black, which I could've gotten, but I didn't. Finally, in the fidget toy section, I have a, speaking of uh, dart slash shurikens, it's a Naruto fidget spinner like this. Or I guess just in general, just ninja. But yeah, it spins like that, which looks a lot cooler in camera than it does in person. Let's just shoehorn these in while I'm at it. Let's go with a, a metal yo-yo that I got. It originally came with a non-trick core, and I switched out for a trick core. Let me show you in, in action. It, it has a little action like this. Comes up for right away. And it even hangs a little bit. I think I did that by accident. I didn't mean for it to hang a little bit, but I like it. Look, see? Hey, it hung. Like I'm hung. <laughs> Probably gonna cut that. <laughs> anyway, finally, uh, the second yo-yo, the first yo-yo I actually bought is, uh, let me see if I can get it attached to my uh, finger. It's a uh, orange yo-yo, plastic, and it, and it and it goes up a lot quicker. Since then, um, kind of not, I kind of unlearned how to do this because it's so different, but it's a lot faster if you noticed. 
And it's definitely a lot more of a trick yo-yo as opposed to the last one, which is more of a half and half. Wait a minute, I forgot about something. So let me just take this out. Let me show you something that I bought that is actually in my pocket. It's my wallet. It's my brand new wallet that I bought from Timu. It's pretty cheap. Um, let me see if I can. So here is this section right here. You notice I've shoved a lot of cards in there. And if you notice, it says, uh, it says, I think if you can see, it says Jing Bao, but uh, it won't show up on camera because my camera's too shit. Bonus round. Yes, I thought I would shove in some stuff that isn't necessarily Timu, but I don't know when the hell else I would talk about it. I went to Goodwill recently. You know what I found at Goodwill for $10? A pretty much brand new mechanical keyboard. Yep, it's a Cherry MX Reds, or I guess they're Gatoron Reds. It's not a hot swappable, but it is fully RGB. The cable is not attachable. It's from Cooler Master. Normally it goes for $70 to $80, and it's pretty nice. You want to hear it, hear it click clack? You know, thock thock, if you will. Isn't that nice? Pretty damn nice, I would say so myself. You know what else I found at Goodwill for 99 cents? It's uh, the Violent Femmes, Violent Femmes album. It's their debut album that I found for 99 cents and it's pretty much good as new, nothing wrong with it too much, except for the sticker that they put on there that it's hard to get the sticky stuff off of. Pretty damn annoying. Well, let's transition that into talking about, yeah, by the way, the album's pretty good. I've listened to the hit song, uh, Listener in the Sun, as well as Add It Up, but the other tracks are pretty good. Not as good, but they're pretty damn good and they're pretty ahead of their time, the Violent Femmes. And finally, let's talk about the one thing that I bought from Timu that I consider the best deal as well as something that, that I I'm surprised we even on there. It's Breath of the Wild sequel, Tears of the Kingdom. You know, so I saved that. Yes, it's Tears of the Kingdom. I bought a Japanese copy off of Timu. With all the with all the price adjustments, which I forgot to mention, there's all sorts of price adjustments you can get on Timu. So I was able to afford a lot of stuff for so much so much cheaper. I'm pretty sure I got this for under 50 with all the credit and price adjustments. It's insane. Yeah, it's actually a pretty damn good game, and I love it. It's it's way better than Breath of the Wild in my opinion. Not exactly way better. There's some advantages from Breath of the Wild that I that I miss. Like for example. Ravioli's Gale, as well as uh, the fact that you had dedicated arrows for bombs and ice and whatnot. I mean, that can, and, and then the lack of arrows is not as nice, but overall, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Which, uh, by the way, the th amiibos I was mentioning is for Tears of the Kingdom. I bought new ones. Hopefully, they work. I'm wishing they will. And it came pretty nice. Uh, if, I don't know if you noticed this. Let me show, see if we can show it on camera. It's got a little bit of a plastic sort of uh, flap on the on the end right here. They kind of flapped up when I, whenever I put it in my collection. Oops, I dropped my keyboard. Oops. I'm glad I was able to get the physical for so damn cheap you know it's one of the things that i splurged on because i felt like i had to because it's freaking tears of the freaking kingdom bro here comes a new challenger yes indeed let me stop saying that i have flip flopped this video on top of its hippie hop head yes indeed Fuck! Um, yeah, I'm doing Switch games and CDs just for a brief moment because I have a little bit more CDs and a little bit more Switch games since doing the last CD video and the last Switch game video. So I'm shoehorned into the Team Move video. That's why you know this video is a little bit longer than it should be, future Matt and uh, future audience. Anyway, first up in the Switch games, there's only three of them, so keep that in mind. It's Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 from Limited Run, those greedy bastards. Yep, it's actually a game that I got used from Limited Run. It's one that I got at my local game shop. It's pretty nice. I, I like the first game, not so much. I like the second game a lot better, hence why I only bought the second game as opposed to the 1 and 2 collection that recently came out from Japan. And plus, I, I, I think I sold some games and I was able to exchange that for Bloodstained St. Curse of the Moon, which is pretty cool. And this is, of course, all alphabetically. Keep in mind all the games I'm showing, as well as all the CDs I'm about to show. Uh, Blessing Curse of the Moon is very similar to Castlevania. I'm not bit the biggest fan of their actual, actual Blood same game. You know, I'm more of a fan of the Curse of the Moon 2 in particular, and I think it's pretty nice. Into Creates makes a lot of cool games. They are the creators of various other Mega Man games that they end up spinning off and do Azure Striker Gumball, and as well as they're making this Castlevania clone. There you go. Next up, of the two out of the three Switch games, it's, I don't know how the fuck to say this, uh, it's called Quilla Sigma, as in Sigma male, I'm a Sigma male, it's a Quilla, it's a sort of arcadey, um, roguelite, sort of, um, hack and slash game where you control an anime girl in a, in a time limit game that you go from floor to floor trying to beat up enemies and get through it in one go. Yeah, it's a pretty brutal game. Let me see, I forgot to mention, does this have a manual? Nope. 
Does the previous game have a manual? You bet your sweet butt it does. In fact, it has a beefy manual. Oops, I spoiled the next game. Well, that has a manual, Mugen Souls, by the way. Curse of the Moon D has a m -m -m manual squad hype moment coming in right now. I know this is kind of sort of fucking all over the place and I apologize. Uh, Cro Cro is pretty good. Speaking of the last game, it's Mugen Souls from East Asia Soft. I pre-ordered this game a while ago and it finally came in, yes. So now I only have one game coming in, it's that fucking Darius Burst game I mentioned in my uh, community section which nobody reads. Uh, Mugen Souls is a sort of uh, RPG uh, idea factory compo heart sort of game. Um, I don't like it as much as I thought I would, but I'm gonna keep it because screw it, um, I don't give a shit. It's alright, who cares. Anyway, let's move on to the CD's nuts. It's electric light orchestras out of the blue it is a fan freaking tastic album it has some of the best tracks i've ever freaking heard like do i even need to mention mr blue sky which in my opinion i think is better than bohemian rhapsody yes i said it but overall this is a fantastic album it says it was di digitally remastered for compact uh, disc by joe gaswort which is nice i guess well, i wish it wasn't digitally remastered but what can you do I like albums, uh, how they sound originally. It has that crappy sort of Epic Records uh, side that I always hate. I think Jeff Lynne is uh, the, the crucial part of ELO, and I think without him, there's no band. Hence why when they spell it off to, uh, I think it's called Jeff Lynne's ELO, I like that as opposed to the actual Electric Lager Show that kept the name. Next up is a new CD. It's Kamasi Washington's The Epic, featuring a million different people. As you can see on the back, it's a jazz epic, hence why it's called The Epic. And it's a three CD sort of ordeal. And if you look right here, here's what it entails right here. It's a pretty freaking epic CD. I wish it wasn't paper, but so be it. People are trying to save the environment, I guess. Whoopee. But it, it's a pretty awesome jazz album. It's fucking long as shit, by the way, as well. I don't, I don't know how long it, it clocks in at, but it's pretty damn long. It came out 2015. This is from uh, Brain Feeder at PNC, and it's uh, it's something that I bought for cheap. I think it was like $12, brand new sealed, and uh, pretty damn happy with that. And that was all spurred on by something you'll see later on in this video. I'm very happy in general. I'm so happy I can barely breathe. Here's Kill Switch Engages. Uh, what is the name of the album? As Daylight Dies. Ooh, very spooky. It's it's a great album. It has several great tracks, including My Curse. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Kill Switch Engage, actually, this is their second singer singing this, which the first singer eventually came back. But I, I prefer the second singer. I don't know why. I just like his stuff a lot better. It is metal. But it's not exactly your typical metal. It's more of like some sort of subgenre I'm not very familiar with. I'm only familiar with uh, rock and jams and the killer singing and whatnot. Uh, the, the album cover is pretty cool. Uh, there's actually still some other album covers. This is apparently the club edition based on Discogs. Kill Switch Engage, one of my favorite sort of uh, metal, metal groups of, of, of its type. Next up is uh, another CD from Brain, whatever the fuck. It's, uh, well, apparently it's from Big Delta Recordings. It's King Ghidorah's Take Me to Your Leader. Yes, it's the spin-off project by MF Doom. Doomale, rest in peace Ale. Am I right, Ale? King Ghidorah is a fantastic album. There's a track on there that I can't say. Uh, you know it. If you know, you know. Uh, it's got some fantastic tracks, some fantastic features. It's a fantastic concept album, and I'm pretty damn happy with it. But why, when am I not happy? I'm a happy, happy boy. This is the album that helped inspire me by new albums from uh, this website, which I don't remember the name of. It's Lewis Cole's Of Quality Over Opinion. Yes, it's a solo album by the guy who co-founded Nowhere. And I bought their new album, by the way. It's pretty nice. But uh, that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is Quality Over Opinion, which is pretty cool. It's mixed like shit, but that's kind of to be expected by Lewis Cole at this point. They do everything on their own at home. Some of my favorite tracks on this album from Lewis Cole in general. I mean, I'm a big fan of uh, Park Your Car On My Face as well as failing in a cool way as well as D dead inside shuffle those are some of my favorite tracks and i've listened to this shit relentlessly next up is an album that needs no introduction it's sublime's 40 ounces to freedom uh rest in peace uh bradley knoll billy wilson also died and they're they're dedicating that album to him it's a pretty cool album it's uh it's one that i enjoy quite a bit and who Am I back? I'm back. Sorry, I, I fucking dropped my CDs. My fucking uh, microphone unplugged, which is awesome. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, what the fuck was I saying? Uh, it's got your standard tracks like uh, Date R. What does it have on here? But it has uh, 
Bad Fish, as well as uh, 40 Ounces of Freedom, the title song, and so much more. There's that, but I'm not a stoner, so I guess I can't fully appreciate the album. Finally, there's two more albums to talk about. The first one being Tenacious D's The Pick of Destiny. Overall, kind of not as good as I remember. This is cool, kind of sort of foil album that goes back and forth like this, which is pretty damn cool. Yeah, it came in a kind of, some of, kind of rough condition, but the, but the CD worked. I was able to rip it all and put it on my computer and pretty well. Overall, kind of a little bit disappointing, but decent enough. The movie's kind of shit, though, let's be real. Pick a Destiny movie, don't even bother, except for the scenes that are cool, which obviously are the Beals of Boss, the Kickapoo, and, uh, and the freaking Master Exploder. Other than that, everything else sucks. Finally, we have Neutral Milk Hotels and the Aeroplane Over the Sea, an album that I'm absolutely in love with. I freaking love this album. It's fan freaking fantastic. It is probably one of the best indie albums ever to come out. It deserves all the high, rate, high ratings it's ever gotten. A very weird album, very, uh, very interesting album, very religious experience sort of album. It's overall something that I recommend to everybody. Give it a shot. Seriously, if you're not, if you've not heard of the airplane over the sea by Neutral Milk Hotel, give it a shot. I love you, Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's it. Hello! The final section that we have today is the twisty puzzle section. Here's a twisty slide puzzle. I don't know how to solve it, because I'm a big fucking stupid idiot. Enough silliness, here's the twisty slide puzzle. You can, you know, put shit down, like right here, and move stuff up and down like that, and sort of mess around with it. I've yet to solve it. Look at it right here in all its glory. Next up in the twisty puzzle section is a gear cube. Looky here, it's a gear cube. It's something that I can absolutely 100% solve. And I'm pretty damn proud of myself for being able to solve it. It's not too hard. It is a generic gear cube. It's not based off the real one. I think, I, I think I've changed my opinion on knockoffs just because of the fact that there's so much higher quality and without knockoffs we wouldn't have the uh, market advancing as much as it has. You know, with V-Cube holding a lot of the patents for the higher tier, a few tier puzzles and whatnot. Great. Cool, huh? I don't even have to take it apart, I can just solve it. Let's pick another puzzle I can solve. Here it is, it's a 2x2x3, two by two by looky here. A 2x2x3, two by two by isn't that cool, yo, everybody? Look at that, it's a 2x2x3. Two by two by it's a pretty cheap mechanism, it's by, uh, I forget what, who it's by, I think it's by the same people who made this. The stickers are, are a little bit higher quality, I mean this is actually literally like, thanks phone. This is literally like a plastic tile that's like embedded into the actual puzzle. This is like some cheap uh, kind of vinyl stickers. It's made out of a 3x3, three three, um, and I like it, it's pretty nice. Um, it does pop occasionally, but I do know how to solve it, so there's that. Speaking of things that pop a lot, it's a 3x3, three three, but looky here, oh my god, it twists! It twists in a unique way, and I do not know how to solve this, because I am not a fucking wizard. And plus, I could I, I could solve it if I looked up an algorithm, but what's the fun in that? You wanna see checker pattern? I bet you do, here it is, looky here, look at that. Isn't that cool? Let me undo it. Yeah, this came with a snake that ended up breaking and falling apart in my hands. As well as a 3x3, uh, mini 3x3, that was shit, so I ended up getting this refunded. Next up is another 3x3 <coughs> mod. It's one that turns... Well, how do you think this turns? Let me, let me see if we can get a good look at it. How do you think it turns? It turns like that. Let's see if we can make this into a chicken patty and see if we can't fuck it up any further than that. If we go like this, what the fuck bloody is this? But it's like an axis cube, I think is what it's called. It's kind of like a ghost cube, but with identical pieces, so isn't that kind of cool? Finally, we have the 3x3 and the 2x2, Kilo Minx and Mega Minx. The Mega Minx itself does not turn the best. I am getting a refund on this because it said it was a speed cube. I was hoping the puzzles would be non, uh, would be, would be non-shit, but they're the shit Brutus cube kinds. It was the vinyl kind, which is still shit, but not as shit. I would I should have gotten stickerless, honestly. And, uh, overall, it doesn't turn the best. This turns much better. It's a Kilo Minx. It's a two by two, uh, Mega Minx. And, uh, it's based off of my, my first design. I, I, I don't think the patent has expired on that one. Maybe it has. Either way, I'm okay with that because that one in terms like even more dog shit. It has all sorts of different colors. It's a, it's a, as it is a pentagonal dodecahedron. It, I don't know if you know that. I can solve this up into the point where I can get this last layer up here. I can solve a two by two, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. But I can solve that uh, up until the last layer. Um, I could look up the, the algorithm to beat it, but that would be no fun. I know how to solve a diamond cube. I know how to solve a cube as well. Is that it? 
Are we done? I think we're done! Holy crap -aroni. I got through that way quicker than I was expecting. So without further ado, cue the music. So future Matt here, I forgot something. Got these little in-ear monitors right here. They're KZ whatever the fucks, I don't remember. They're pretty nice. Um, I've been listening to one Wayne G on my phone with them. They're not as nice as these puppies or my other puppies over there. But yeah, they're pretty nice and my dad is uh, inflating a pool for the millionth time with his really loud fucking pump, so that's awesome. So that's actually the real end of the video. I don't know how many fucking times I've done this. I've, I've like faked out the ending. So uh, now cue the music. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. Like Jesus f 